Welcome to the Stop COVID Deaths webinar series brought to you by the University of the Philippines. The Stop COVID Deaths shorts make it easier for you to go to the presentations that you are interested in. I'm Dr. Raymond Sarmiento, Director of the National Telehealth Center. And I'm Dr. Susie Pineda Mercado, Adjunct Faculty of the National Telehealth Center. Together, Together let's, let's stop, stop COVID deaths. So this is just an update of my uh, you know, uh, previous talk on the Delta variant. And these are my disclosures. Obviously, lots of pharma here. Um, also an NIH site uh, for uh, COVID, uh, outpatient COVID treatment that's active too. And I'm a minor, minor contributor for the Okta research team. So uh, before I start, let me just uh, you know, uh, summarize my, my, my first talk on the Delta variant and just the highlights. Uh, I mentioned that the uh, basic reproduction, reproduction number of uh, the, the Delta variants five to eight. There's actually some studies showing it's probably up to 9.5. So really the herd immunity is approaching 80 to 90%. I also mentioned in my previous talk that the all the vaccines are effective in uh, protecting against severe diseases, including hospitalizations, and that's at least 85%. And the breakthrough uh, infections, of course, will not be uncommon. Uh, and if you get a breakthrough infection, it will be it will tend to be milder and there will be decreased secondary transmission. There's some data showing there's actually a decreased mutation rate. So let's start with um, uh, the variants of concern. Uh, of course, we have alpha, which is uh, first detected in the United Kingdom, beta from South Africa, gamma from uh, Brazil, and of course, delta, we're gonna, uh, concentrate on Delta, which was uh, first detected in India. Uh, I mentioned before that there was no gamma in Africa, but now obviously there's uh, South Africa, Nigeria, and Sudan with uh, uh, gamma. So in the United States, when I did my uh, talk in uh, July 16, um, a majority already still uh, already of uh, Delta variants, but now as you can see, it, more than 99%, more than 99% uh, are uh, Delta, overwhelming. This one is for my previous talk in July six uh, on July sixteen, and uh, I, this is uh, showing the epidemic curves of the uh, new cases and deaths for the United States. As you can see, there's a slight increase in the cases at that time, and there's stabilization in the uh, deaths. And this is act, and this is despite despite the mobility increasing to baseline. And I made a, uh, a, a forecast. Uh, during that time, I made a prediction that it will be similar to the uh, epidemic curves of the United Kingdom, where the cases increased, there's a significant increase, but the deaths, the death curve is quite flat. We call this decoupling, uh, decoupling of the uh, cases and deaths. And this is despite the increase in uh, uh, mobility to uh, baseline. There's actually no mass, they actually stopped the mass ma mandates, at least in the United States. So what happened? Anong nangyari? So obviously I've, I was wrong with my prediction. Uh, United Kingdom, of course, you know, uh, it peaked and then of course there's a decrease in cases here. Uh, there's some uh, stabilization of the hospital admissions. For deaths, uh, you know, it's quite, it's quite flat. It's actually still increasing, but it's quite flat compared to the cases. But the United States, look at this. Uh, increase, increase in cases, increase in hospital admissions, and the deaths are still increasing. So what is the, the explanation for this uh, difference? And it's probably the vaccination rate. As you can see here, there's still a lot of cases, uh, a lot of areas in the United States with, where the unvaccination, uh, unvaccinated population is more than 10%, more than 10%. And in the uh, United Kingdom, most of the unvaccinated uh, uh, population is less than 5%. So the difference is really about 10%. I thought it was, would not be a big deal, but obviously the, uh, the herd immunity probably really approaches 90%, and that's why there's a big difference between uh, United States and United Kingdom. Uh, this one is the Delta variant nationwide transmission. As you can see here, the initial high-level transmission happened in the South uh, southeastern United States. And uh, this one is showing you the correlation between the seven-day case rate per 100,000 and the uh, 
state, the percent of state population vaccination. So if, for example, Louisiana, Arkansas, Missouri, and Alabama, they all have low vaccination rate, only about 35%. They have the highest case rate per 100,000. This is Vermont approaching 70% vaccination rate, and they have the lowest uh, case rate per 100,000. The only outlier here really is uh, Florida. Uh, they have a decent pop, you know, uh, vaccination rate of 50%. The population is, uh, uh, half of the population is vaccinated, but they have a very high uh, case rate per 100,000. This one is just from the Kaiser Family Foundation, uh, Pfizer, uh, yeah, Kaiser Family Foundation, showing the difference in vaccination by, by race and ethnicity. For African Americans, 40%, 40%. Hispanic non-white, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Hispanic white is 45%. White non-Hispanic is 50%. And, and for Asian, it's pretty high, 67%. Two thirds of the uh, Asian population is uh, uh, vaccinated. And uh, uh, I don't, I don't have any data for Filipino Americans, but I'm pretty sure it's near the uh, two thirds, sixty-seven percent. And for the elderly, um, con I'm pretty sure it's more than nine, more than ninety percent of the uh, subpopulation is uh, vaccinated. So I'm confident that the Filipino Americans are, are will be uh, protected at, at least against severe, severe disease, severe COVID disease. Now, this one is from the McKinsey's healthcare system analysis of, from several sources. And uh, one of, of them, of course, is CDC. This is just showing you the uh, uh, hospitalization and their death uh, uh, epidemic curves for the unvaccinated population, which is the blue dotted line, and the uh, vaccinated population, which is the blue solid line. Uh, the black solid line, of course, is the entire population will be in between the two. And as you can see, for the unvaccinated population, there's a tremendous increase in number of cases, even higher than that of the uh, winter surge. And uh, for deaths, uh, it's it's quite significant. But for the vaccinated population, it's, it's quite flat. Uh, this lower threshold is the influenza uh, uh, rate, hospitalization and death rate. And the, the upper threshold is the peak rate. And uh, as you can see, but hopefully, in the, during the winter season, it will not uh, reach this uh, threshold for the uh, uh, peak influenza rate. This is actually our goal for, for COVID-19 is just to be at least similar to the influenza. Uh, uh, if we don't have any uh, immunity yet against influenza, but at least we're controlling it with uh, regular uh, vaccination. However, the problem is the we underestimated the number of uh, unvaccinated uh, individuals. This one is from Chile, uh, which used uh, Sinovac. And as you can see, there's increase in uh, cases, uh, but in, the, in terms of number of deaths, it's actually quite uh, uh, relatively, relatively flat. So there's still decoupling here. And this is despite increase in the baseline uh, uh, mobility. This is from the Philippines. This is from my previous talk showing, you know, there's a decrease in cases and the deaths are stable. Obviously, there's increase in mobility at the time. You know, the Delta variant still uh, 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 starting. And obviously, you know, I, I made a comment that it's unstoppable. The Delta variant is unstoppable. And as you can see, that there's a tre tremendous increase in number of cases in the Philippines, although the increase in deaths is not proportional. So it looks like there's some decoupling between the case and the deaths. And this might be secondary to the high vaccination rate of the elderly in the national capital region. The problem is if it spreads outside of the national capital region because the, the vaccination rate for the, elderly, for the elderly outside of NCR is much lower. And of course, there's also increase in mobility in the Philippines. So that, that's a, a concern. This is, of course, from India. India did not have any decoupling. Okay? No decoupling with cases and deaths. About half a million reported deaths. Excess, the estimated excess deaths, according to a Harvard study, is about uh, 5 million. So uh, obviously the cases decrease because of the uh, decrease in mobility, but it's increasing again. So we don't know if, uh, you know, if, if uh, a, a significant proportion of the population is still not infected, they, they will have a, a, a next wave. Uh, 
Now, what is the reasoning behind the increased transmissibility of Delta? And this is from a study from Singapore showing that the viral load of the Delta variant is much higher compared to the other variants. Uh, this is the viral load, depend it depends on the city value. The lower the city value, the, lo the higher the viral load. The, the higher the city value, the lower viral load. So for example, it's four to five, that will be the, the threshold. So lower than that will be considered undetectable. Um, and this one is also from Singapore showing a study comparing uh, breakthrough infections from uh, vaccinated uh, individuals and infection from un unvaccinated individuals. As you can see in the first five days, the viral load is high and comparable, but there's a rapid drop in the viral load in uh, breakthrough uh, infections in vac vaccinated individuals. This might explain, this might explain the uh, the, uh, increased protections against uh, severe disease. This one is uh, from a preprint by uh, Shamir, and this one is showing that although the uh, viral load is comparable between unvaccinated and vaccinated uh, healthcare workers, the probability of culture positivity is lower in patients with who are vaccinated with breakthrough infections compared to unvaccinated. So there's actually decreased infectiousness uh, compared to uh, unvaccinated individuals. This one is just for multiple sources, just showing that there's decreasing uh, protections against uh, infections, including asymptomatic infections, especially in Israel uh, versus uh, the Delta variant compared to the Alpha variant. But if you look at the hospitalization or death rate or you know severe uh, COVID disease, there's actually not much of a decrease. Still 100% in Qatar, 91% Israel, 96 to 100% in England and Canada. So uh, there's lower protection against uh, infection, including asymptomatic infections, but still great protection efficacy against uh, severe disease, including uh, hospitalizations and deaths. This one is from the Mayo Clinic Health System showing there might be some difference between Moderna and Pfizer. There's uh, uh, in terms of uh, infections, including asymptomatic infections. But uh, if you look at hospitalization rate, there's really no significant difference between the two. Uh, this one is from uh, the MMWR, uh, a study uh, showing that the vaccine effectiveness uh, is decreased com uh, comparing the pre-Delta uh, variant predominance and Delta variant predominance from 91 going to 66%. It also shows that if there's probably some waning in immunity, 85%, 14 to 119 days after full vaccination, decreasing to 73% with more than 150 days after full vaccination. So there might be some uh, waning in uh, immunity. However, in this study, uh, uh, based on the COVID net cohort, Although there's an increase in infections, you know, these are the surges, uh, not infections, sorry, hospitalizations. The, for the vaccinated, vaccinated population, it's quite flat. The hospitalization rate for the vaccination, vaccinated uh, uh, P, uh, uh, individuals with breakthrough infection is quite flat. Okay, there's not much uh, a difference. And this is the last slide. This is uh, from LA County reporting in, in the uh, MMWR showing the infection and hospitalization rates from May to July. And this is when the uh, Delta variant became uh, predominant. And as you can see, there's an increase in, in infection rates. Some is slight increase for vaccinated and partially vaccinated individuals. But for hospitalization rates, although there's increases for unvaccinated, it's quite flat for fully vaccinated and even partially vaccinated individuals. So even partially in the vaccinated individual, individuals have great uh, protection against uh, severe disease. That should be it. That's uh, all I have. Thank you. We hope that you learned as much as we did from that excellent presentation. We also hope that you will join us every Friday from 12 noon to 2 p.m. Manila time on Zoom, Facebook, or YouTube. So stay safe. Stay connected. And, and see you online. online.